It was a battle of two teams we thought coming into the season would be conference contenders. And right now, they are two teams going in opposite directions. The Cincinnati Bengals beat down the San Francisco 49ers 31-17. to The Bengals handing the 49ers their third consecutive loss. Jake Lisko from Locked on Bengals joins me now. And Jake, this was, I think for the first time this season, Joe Burrow looked like Joe Burrow in this one. But how much deeper does it go than, hey, he just looked healthy? I think that's a big part of it. I I don't know if it's significantly deep. There's some more depth to it for sure, right? But how much of it is that Joe Burrow is able to evade three would-be sackers on a Mm -hmm. third down on the first drive of the game, break the pocket and find T. Higgins for a first down, which we've seen him do in clutch moments throughout his career. But that leads to a first drive touchdown where two, three, four weeks ago, maybe two weeks ago, he he maybe can, but three, four weeks ago, the first two games of the season, he's just going down. He's not calling his own number on QB draws. They don't have a QB sneak in the playbook. In fact, they're hardly, if at all, going under center. They, They really didn't go under center essentially at all when Joe Burrow was not healthy. You started to see a little bit of it the last couple of games. And then in this game, there's a heavy dose of it, and they're not running the ball. It's a lot of play action, and the play action is successful, which last year the Bengals had to scrap their under center game entirely because it was so ineffective. The offensive line also held up, I thought, in both phases of the game in run blocking and in pass protection against a really, really good San Francisco defensive front that I thought might torpedo the game entirely. So it's not just that Joe Burrow is healthy, but – him playing like himself when the offense is built around him for him is it's impossible to state or to overstate the importance of Joe Burrow being healthy and playing like himself, like he did today. Yeah. Turnovers defensively also a big, big factor in this game. If you just looked at the box score and you said, okay, Brock Purdy averaged almost 12 yards in attempt and on the ground, the rushing attack also averaged, Almost five yards in attempt. You go, oh, well, Lou Anarumo, they didn't get it done. But it was the turnovers in this one. What are you taking away from this defensive performance? Understanding that there were a lot of yards in this one, but the turnovers carry the day. 70 of those yards did come on the last two plays of the game with time expiring. So I'd throw 70 yards out. But even throwing 70 yards out, there's 390 yards for San Francisco's offense. There's some other yards that I also discount a little bit due to the situation in the game at the end of the first half where you're exchanging yards for time. But still, those yards count much more to me than than the true garbage time. These literally can have no impact on the game yards. The the takeaway, though, is a situational play for Luana Ramos' defense. The first couple of drives of the game – they get two, three, two, three and outs, I think, in San Francisco's first three drives. There's a touchdown sandwich in the middle, but you get the two, three and outs, which gives the offense a chance to score two touchdowns and miss a field goal. So it could be 17 to seven instead of 14 to seven. They have a chance to go up, I think, 24 to 10, if not for the missed field goal, if not for Irv Smith fumbling on the three yard line in the first half. So I thought the defense got off to an actually pretty good start before Kyle Shanahan sort of figured out the right buttons to press early in the second half. And then it is a takeaway. It's Brock Purdy, known this year for putting the ball in danger, hadn't been punished yeah. for that consistently throughout the year. The Bengals made him pay. One of them, a fantastic interception by Jermaine Pratt on the sideline, tipping a pass in Brock Purdy's face to himself for an interception. The other one, he just doesn't see Logan Wilson underneath on a little inbreaker on dagger when the Bengals were in cover four. So that's just a, a terrible throw from Brock Purdy, who was otherwise, I thought, pretty impressive in this game, largely for, for someone who didn't think super highly of him, thought he was kind of just a guy, created for himself quite a bit and, and did some pretty impressive things. But the clutch gene continues to be there for Luana Ramos' defense, getting takeaways in the red zone, finding clutch turnovers, finding clutch sacks. And they got off to a hot start as well, despite – still needing to clean up the explosive play stuff because it's not like it's all roses. That that was an issue throughout this game. And and some of it was, like I said, exchanging time for for yards, but other plays were plays that you would like to have not have given up if you're Luana Ramos' defense. 